managers hear HR refer to employees as exempt or non-exempt. But what exactly determines an employee's exemption status? Employees must meet criteria for both compensation and duties. To be considered exempt or salaried, employees must meet the annual compensation basis of at least $23,660 with very few exceptions. Additionally, employees must meet certain essential functions to be classified as exempt. These functions depend upon the category of their job. The two most common exemption tests for employees are executive, sometimes known as the supervisory duties testing, and the administrative duties test. For the executive supervisory duties test, the primary duty is management of a customarily recognized department or subdivision within the company. The employee should regularly direct the work of two or more employees, having the authority to hire, fire, or promote other employees. For the administrative duties test, the primary duty is the performance of office or non-manual work directly related to the management or general business operations of the employer or the employer's customers. Employees meeting this exemption test should have the ability to exercise discretion or independent judgment with matters of significance. The main differences between exempt and non-exempt employees include payment methods. In most cases, non-exempt employees are paid hourly. Overtime, where non-exempt employees are eligible to receive overtime at a rate of one and a half times their rate of pay, typically for hours worked over 40 in a work week. Timekeeping, non-exempt employees are required to account for time worked and be paid accordingly. Allowed deductions, employers have more flexibility in making deductions from a non-exempt employee's pay, such as paying for partial days. If you have any questions regarding this video, feel free to contact a member of CAI's Advice and Resolution Team. Give us a call, email, or chat.